Hello everyone, so I'm going to continue from where I left off in the last video. Again, we were talking about the five fingers of evolution. We already covered genetic drift, which in the video he was talking about small population. If there is a small population and there is some type of random event that occurs, so in this example, some of the ladybugs, the blue ones in particular, were killed off by chance. This caused a change in the gene pool, so what traits, what traits that we see showing up. In this case, we see red is a lot more common now. And again, genetic drift, this has a large impact on very small populations because you can see that change a lot more rather than in a larger population. And then also we talked about non-random mating, usually organisms will choose their mate. I talked about the birds. Usually the male bird tends to be very colorful in order to attract a female. I also talked about mutations. Mutations can be good, bad, or neutral. In your projects you saw how for humans they can often lead to something very bad like a genetic disease or disorder. However, in if we're talking about nature and these beetles for instance, a mutation could be a good thing if, let's say, we get a brown beetle and let's say the environment is mostly brown and this one blends in more, well then it will be more likely to survive than these green beetles. So that can be an example of a mutation being a good thing. And then we talked about gene flow, so this is individuals moving in or, in or out of a population. So again, being the same species, meaning they can reproduce with each other. So maybe we have some bluebirds over here and maybe a bluebird flies over here to join this population of redbirds, thus changing the type of genes present in the gene pool evolution has occurred. Now the last, one, last force, or one of the five fingers of evolution, is natural selection, which is one that we're going to talk a lot about in depth and is probably one of the most important ones. Now, we've talked about this definition before. A natural selection is a mechanism or process by which individuals that have inherited beneficial adaptations, meaning they are more um, well equipped to survive in a certain environment given that they have certain traits that allows them to do so. Well, if they're surviving, they're gonna have more offspring on average than those other individuals. So we're going to break this down into four main forces or the four main pieces behind natural selection. The first one being overproduction. So of course these individuals have, that are going to pass on their genes eventually have to have more offspring that are produced than will survive. As an individual organism you have to have at least two individuals at least to replace you once you are gone and also to pass on your genetic traits or your genes. Now there is natural genetic um, variation. Um, this should say genetic variation. So there's natural variation within populations. So there's different phenotypes and genotypes. So for instance, going back to these birds, for instance, within their, within this species, some of them were blue and some of them were red. That is just natural variation within their population. Also, there has to be some type of environmental pressure in order for evolution and natural selection to pl take place. There is a struggle for survival whether that be for resources, food, water, space, mates, there's some type of competition. There has to be an order for evolution, natural selection to take place. Now the last piece is that differential reproduction. So individuals with those favorable traits, the ones with the adaptations that are more well equipped to survive in a particular environment, are more likely to survive and reproduce therefore passing on those genes, passing on those traits. 
over time, if we are selecting, if nature is selecting for a certain trait that is more well adapted to survive in a particular environment, over those many generations, we're going to start to see a change. So I'm going to talk about the picture first before I get into this piece over here. So here's natural selection in a nutshell. So let's go back to those beetles for a second here, okay? So let's say we have green and brown beetles, okay? Now look at the environment that they are in. Notice that the green beetles are the ones that are sticking out more to the birds, which are their predators. Again, in this case, there's a competition for survival. We're talking about the beetles here. So there's competition to survive and not get eaten by a predator. That can be an example of an environmental pressure. Within the population, there's natural variation. Some of the beetles are green and some of them are brown. Now, nature is going to select for the one that has the best trait in order to survive. In this case, the green beetles stick out more, so they're more likely to be eaten, and the brown beetles will survive. Now, those brown beetles that survive are going to reproduce, and they're going to replace themselves. Over time, we see that eventually we get an environment where we have all or a population where there's just those brown beetles because they are the ones that are surviving. So over time we saw a change in the gene pool and we saw a change in that population in terms of the phenotype over generations. Now we talked about this term earlier, an adaptation is a certain variation of a trait that allows that individual to survive better than un other individuals. In this case, we're talking about the color of the beetles. The brown was um, a better color that survived in that environment. A lot of examples that we use for natural selection is oftentimes color. You know, who's blending in better with the environment and therefore avoid being eaten by a predator. But it could also mean you know, maybe you have a better trait in order to find food, or maybe you have a certain trait that will attract mates more. And it just depends on what the example is that you're talking about. In this case, we're going to use a lot of times surviving from being eaten by a predator. Now, fitness is a measure of the ability uh, to survive and reproduce more offspring relative to the members of the population in a given environment. Now, survival of the fittest. This does not always mean the fastest and the strongest. With the beetles, it meant who had a certain color that was better able to survive in that particular environment. And fitness more particularly means the ability to have offspring. Fitness means the ability to pass on your traits to the next generation of offspring, which yes, that means one, you have to survive, but two, you have to be able to reproduce and pass those traits on to your offspring. And that is the five fingers of evolution and natural selection.